Wednesday. Amen. Hallelujah. Salamat sa Panginoon at uh, umiinit ang pag-ibig natin sa Kanya. Are you ready for the word, church? Tayong lahat ay tumayo. Hallelujah. Namimiss kong nag-preach. I think I only preach once or twice a month na lang. Pero this is the moment and I'm excited to share the word of the Lord today. We are going to recite our pledge to the Bible. Amen. Sabay-sabay po nating bigkasin. One, two, three, go. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will hide its words in my heart that I may not sin against God. Let's pray. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, our hearts are filled with praise and adoration to your name. Because in you, O oh Lord, we live and move and have our being. We thank you, O oh Lord, for bringing us together once again as a church family and as a body of Christ. Salamat, Panginoon, sa patnubay. Salamat, Panginoon, sa kalakasan. Salamat sa pagtugon ng lahat ng aming mga pangangailangan. Lord, it's time again for us to listen to your word. Anoint your words, O Lord. We hunger and thirst for you. And as the deer pants for the waters, so our soul longs after you. Speak to us, O Lord, today as you will. May, you be, may we all be cleansed and be washed by your word. May our lives be transformed into the likeness of our Lord Jesus Christ. O Holy Spirit, kumilos ka sa kalagitnaan namin sa araw na ito. This we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Everybody say, Amen! Amen! Greet the people around you as you have a seat. Amen! Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Praise God. Excellent. Okay, let's fasten our seat belts. We are now going to proceed to the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Our text is found in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6 to 8. Sabi dito, For I am already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time of my departure is near. Can we all read together verse 7? I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Verse 8. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for His appearing. Para mas maintindihan natin, basahin po natin sa Tagalog, sapagkat dumating na ang panahon ng pagpanaw ko sa buhay na ito, ako'y mistulang isang handog na ibinubuhos sa dambana. Pinagbuti ko ang aking pakikipaglaban, natapos ko na ang dapat kong takbuhin, at nanatili akong tapat sa pananampalataya. Kaya naghihintay sa akin ang koronang gantimpala para sa mga namuhay ayon sa kalooban ng Diyos. Sa araw na iyon, ang Panginoon na siyang makatarungang hukom ang siyang magpuputong sa akin ng korona. Hindi lamang sa akin, kundi sa lahat ng nananabik sa kanyang pagbabalik. Our theme for today is fighting the good fight, finishing the race, and Keeping the faith. Amen. Itong message natin sa araw na ito is a continuation. I don't know if you would remember. It's a continuation of my preaching during the summer camp. As we all know, what is our theme for the year? Pakisigaw? Sigaw ba yan? Pakisigaw yung theme natin for the year? 
Yon, that's our theme for the year. And so I preached to you on this text last summer camp. And so I have mentioned to you last time na lalong lalo na sa verse 7, there are three things that Apostle Paul encourages us to do. First thing is fight the good fight. Second, finish the race. And third, keep the faith. So yung focus ko last summer camp was to fight the good fight. We have mentioned that as Christians, we are not on a playground, but instead we are on a battleground. Sino sa inyo dito ang feeling nasa playground bilang mga Kristiyano? Mali po. Hindi po tayo nasa playground. Nasa battleground po tayo. This is a serious matter, church. Bilang mga Kristiyano, hindi lang tayo naglalaro o nagpapalipas ng panahon. Panahon. Hindi tayo nakikipaglokohan o nakikipagbiruan, lalong-lalo na sa Diyos. We are not on a playground, but instead, we are on a battleground. We are in a constant warfare. So church, in this battleground, sino kalaban natin? Who are we fighting with? Church, always remember that we are not fighting against each other. Amen. The fighting match is not against you and me. The fighting match is not against you and your church mates. It's not against you or anybody else around you. Hindi mga tao sa paligid natin ang kalaban natin. And who is our kalaban? Sinabi natin yan nung summer camp, your enemy is either yourself or Satan and his forces of evil. Amen. Are we following church? Remember yung memory verse natin sa Hebrews 12 verse 1, doon sa last part, sabi doon, we are supposed to run with perseverance the race that is marked out for us. Take note yung term na marked out for us. Markado. Destinado. Nakadetermine yung race ng bawat isa sa atin. I have my own race track. I have my own lane that is marked for me. You also have your own race track. You also have your own lane. Kaya walang sagasaan dito mga kapatid. Walang overtaken dito. Walang Una, un, ulang unahan, kanya-kanya tayo ng pace, kanya-kanya tayo ng lane, may kanya-kanya tayong mga takbuhin, mga kapatid. So, if there is any hindrance or obstacle in your lane, hindi yung ibang tao yun. It is only either ikaw din, you, or the work of the enemy. So you cannot blame it to other people kasi may mga sarili din silang takbo. You can only blame it to yourself and the devil because they are the only ones whom we are fighting with. Amen? Are we following church? So we have to fight the good fight. Fight what this latu wants, what this flesh wants, and fight the distractions and the false schemes of the devil. Can I hear an amen, church? Amen. Palakpakan natin ang Panginoon. Point number two, fight. Ano yun? Finish the race. Uh, the, our other pastors are focusing on this part of the message. We have heard messages about finishing strong, etc. Alam niyo, church, it's good to have a good starting point. Ang ganda ng simula ng takbo mo. Mula noong naligtas ka at nakilala mo ang Panginoon. Ang ganda ng ministry mo. You have a great ministry. In fact, pag nagkakwento ka nga, yun lagi ang laman ng kwento eh, yung simula. But even more important than our starting point is the finishing point. Amen? Mas importante yung graduation kaysa sa enrollment. Amen? Ano mas importante? Enrollment or graduation? Of course, graduation. God wants us all to finish the race and to finish it strong. So this is the most important of all, 
that we have ended and finished the race well. Amen. Yun yung point number two. And then point number three, keep the faith. Nandun pala pala ako. Yan. Keep the faith. And this is what we are going to focus on today. Kaya yun ang pinaka-bold na phrase doon sa title natin. Keeping the faith. So what does it mean to keep the faith? Ano bang ibig sabihin niyang keep the faith na yan? Actually, it's easier to understand if we translate it in Tagalog. Anong Tagalog ng keep the faith? Sabi doon sa verse na binasa natin, manatiling tapat sa pananampalataya. Can we all recite that? Manatiling tapat sa pananampalataya. Now, why is it important to keep the faith? Bakit importante ang manatiling tapat? Well, obviously, because a lot of people are losing their faith. Marami kasi ang nawawala. Marami kasi ang nalilihis. Marami ang naliligaw. Marami ang nakakalimot. Kaya ang paalala sa atin, the reminder of God for us today is to keep the faith. Amen. Pakisabi sa katabi, keep the faith. Amen. You see, God does not want us to start. Nag-start tayo lahat, di ba? And then get lost. Or even worse, quit along the way. God does not want us to lose track. God does not want us to be distracted or to stumble or to fall. Instead, God wants us to continuously run and never stop. Amen? Nais ng Diyos na sa ating pagtakbo, tuloy, tuloy, tuloy. Eh yung iba, tuloy, hinto, pahiya, tulog. Pero ang gusto ng Panginoon, tuloy, tuloy, tuloy. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, how are we going to keep the faith? Yun ang sasagutin natin sa araw na to. Paano tayo mananatiling tapat sa pananampalataya? Maraming paraan. No? Last Sunday, sinare sa atin ni Pastor Nino, what is the grace for the race? Okay. So, ngayon, Meron na naman tayong mapag-aaralan base sa 2 Timothy chapter 4 verses 6 to 7. So are we ready church? Okay, there are just three things that I want to pr to propose to you today. So point number one, in order to keep the faith para mapanatili natin ang ating pananampalataya, we need to prepare for the present. Maghanda para sa nangyayari ngayon. Ihanda natin ang ating mga sarili sa mga kasalukuyang mga kaganapan. Amen? You see, if you are actively running in the spiritual race, then you must be prepared for what's happening now. Basahin natin sa verse 6. For I am already being poured out like a drink offering. And the time of my departure is near. Uh, sa Tagalog, sabi ni Apostle Paul, ako'y mistulang isang handog na ibinubuhos sa dambana. So imagine a wine that is being poured on a cup. Yun yung picture na pinapakita ni Paul sa atin. I am a drink offering. Binubuhos na ako doon sa cup. I am a drink offering. That's me. Can you imagine the picture? Okay. So, if you are not prepared for the present, ang mangyayari kasi, you will either drop out of the course or you will lose the race. Okay, you will understand better. Let me explain it to you this way. Have you ever watched a game and then you can tell while you are watching whether the athletes were prepared for the game or not. Yun bang halata mo kung nakahanda o praktisado yung atleta o hindi? Pansin mo, halata mo eh, di ba? As a fan, if you are watching a game, isn't it frustrating? Especially if you already paid for an expensive ticket. 
nagbayad ka na ng pay-per-view sa HBO, ready na yung pizza at popcorn mo sa mesa, no? And only to perceive and to notice that the athletes are not ready for the competition. Nakaka-disappoint, hindi po ba? Tapos sasabihin ng mga players sa interview, ah, hindi kasi kami nakapaghanda ng maayos para sa competition. You see, church, what Apostle Paul is saying in this verse is that since we are all in the racetrack, lahat tayo tumatakbo sa kristyanong pamumuhay natin. Kung ano man ang nangyayari sa atin ngayon, dapat lagi tayong handa. Kaya sabi ni Apostle Paul, I am already being poured out like a drink offering. Ano ba ang pakahulugan nitong drink offering na ito? What does it mean? So, when Apostle Paul said, I am a drink offering, it means I am ready to be served. I am ready to be of service. Ibig sabihin, I am all yours, Lord. My life is not my own. Yun ang ibig sabihin nun. Use me, O Lord, in whatever you want to use me. I am already being poured out as a drink offering. I am an offering. I am a sacrifice. Sabi sa Tagalog, ako'y mistulang isang handog na naibuhos na. Isa akong offering, isa akong sakripisyo. I give myself away. Yan ang mga pakaulugan nun. Lagi nating mga kinakantayang mga verses na yan sa mga kanta natin, di ba? That is what it means. So, whatever happens in the present, however God wants to use us, we need to be prepared. Can I hear an amen, church? Amen. Alam nyo, si Apostle Paul, he was put into prison many, many times. Maraming beses siyang nasa preso. In fact, when he was writing the letters to the Corinthians, Ephesians, Galatians, Kadalasan nasa loob siya ng preso while he was writing those books no? or those letters. But the question is, why was he repeatedly in prison? Bakit kaya laging nasa tinatapon sa preso si Apostle Paul? Well, the thing is because he kept on preaching the Word of God and he kept on building churches even if the government does not allow him to do so. Si Apostle Paul kasi, church planter yan sa maraming mga bansa. He kept on preaching the word of God. So ang number one persecutor ni Paul, hindi lang basta tao, hindi lang basta pamilya, gobyerno. Kaya lagi siyang ipinakukulong at dinadakip. But then, Paul said, I am ready. I am prepared. Come what may. Now church, let us reflect on ourselves. How are we prepared in our present spiritual race? Kumusta po ang kasalukuyang pagtakbo natin, mga kapatid? Reflect on yourself. Are you spiritually well fit right now? Healthy ka ba spiritually? Or are you feeling spiritually weak, spiritually dry, and spiritually sick? Ang tanong, how can we tell? Paano ba natin nalalaman kung tayo ba ay spiritually healthy or not? Pag tinitigan mo ba yung katabi mo, um, madidetect mo ba, madadiagnose mo ba kung spiritually healthy yan or hindi? Okay. How can we tell if we are spiritually healthy or fit? Para masasabi natin na preparadong preparado tayo ngayon. There are many indicators, maraming mga signs and symptoms. But I will just tell you two obvious signs. Tingnan natin kung obvious ba ito sa atin. Number one, you are healthy, you are spiritually fit if you have a good spiritual appetite. Tama? Ang isang tao, kapag maganda ang appetite niyang kumain, Malusog yun. Di ba? Pero pag walang ganang kumain, haba, may problema. 
So what is true in the physical is also true in the spiritual. If you have a good spiritual appetite, then you must be healthy. It means you are hungry and thirsty for God. Ganado kang namnamin at lasapin ang salita ng Diyos. You want your spirit to be satisfied and full. Pero if you don't have the appetite for the things of God, wala kang ganang mag-worship, walang kalatoy-latoy. Wala kang ganang manalangin. Wala kang ganang makinig sa salita ng Diyos parang nangangati lagi yung puwet mo para tumayo. Wala kang ganang makipag-fellowship sa iyong mga kapatiran Kapatid, pag ganyan ang nangyayari, magpa-check up ka sa Panginoon. Amen? Baka may problema tayo, may sakit tayo spiritually. Hindi ba obvious indication yon? Pangalawa, how else can you tell if we are spiritually healthy and fit? You are fit and healthy if you have a strong resistance against viruses and toxins. Okay. Alam ko, iniisip nyo ngayon, COVID. Pero, spiritual tayo. Spiritual. You are spiritually healthy and fit if you have a strong immune system. Ibig sabihin, you can easily resist the devil and you can always resist temptation and sin. Pero kapatid, kapag madali kang bumibigay sa tukso at madali kang bumibigay para magkasala, naku, something's wrong. Mahina ang immune system natin spiritually. Amen? Are you following church? So marami pang mga indicators, pero itong dalawa lang na ito, based on these two indicators, now reflect yourself. Are you physically prepared for the present? Healthy ka ba? Do you have good appetite? Sabik ka ba sa Panginoon? O parang napipilitan ka lang? At madali ba tayong tumanggi sa mga tukso ng kaaway? Amen? So dalawang bagay lang. Excited ka for the Lord? At ayaw mo ang mga bagay ng kaaway? That's it. Kung check pareho yung box na yon, then you are spiritually fit. Amen? And healthy. That means, preparado ka kung atakihin ka man ng kahit anong umatake sa'yo ngayon. Amen! Hallelujah! Palakpakan natin ng Panginoon. Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! So, in order to keep the faith, once again, point number one, we have to be prepared for the present. Be spiritually fit. Amen! Be active. Exercise. Eat spiritual food. Be healthy so that whatever comes your way, anumang virus yan, anumang toxin yan, hindi tayo magkakasakit. Amen? Malusog at malakas tayo spiritually. Amen? So that's number one. Point number two, we don't only think of the present, but in order to keep the faith, we need to also build on the past. Okay, so kanina present, Ngayon naman, past. Sabi ulit sa verse 7, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. So, how was Paul prepared for the present? Bakit siya naging preparado sa kasalukuyan? Well, Paul was prepared for the present because his present was built on his past. Okay. Linawin natin, your strength in the present is built from your preparation in the past. Ang kalakasan at katatagan mo ngayon ay nakabase sa paghahanda mo noong nakaraan. You had a good history in the past. That's why you have a good Present. Okay, practical examples. Ang ganda ng credit score mo ngayon. Alam mo kung bakit? Kasi ang ganda ng credit history mo 
through the years nung naaraan. Correct? Nagtaka ka pa kung bakit zero ang credit score mo, eh hindi ka nagbabayad ng utang eh nung nakaraan. Nagets nyo yung point? Okay. Whatever product or project you have right now is because of your hard work in the past. Tama? Okay. You have your knowledge and your skill right now na naia-apply mo because you have learned and studied well when you were still back in school. Ang sarap-sarap mong magluto kasi pinanood mong mabuti kung paano nagluto yung nanay mo noong nakaraan. Right? Maganda ang kasalukuyan mo ngayon kasi nagpundar at nagpursigi ka noong nakaraang mga panahon. Okay? So back in our text, Apostle Paul was able to keep his faith in the middle of all hardships because he used his pastime wisely in preparation. So, balikan natin. Paul uses these three verbs to describe his past. Balikan natin ulit yung tatlong point natin. Kasi may, gusto ko maitatak sa isip natin yung tatlong yan. Eh. Kung may memory verse tayo ngayong araw na ito, kahit ito man lang, 2 Timothy 4.7 I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Madaling memory verse, di ba? Okay. So, isa-isahin natin ulit ng mabilis. First, he said, I have fought the good fight. Yung word na fight dito, the word fight here does not mean being in a quarrel or being in an argument. Alam ko, yung mga iba dito, mahilig makipag-fight. <laughs> Pero yung salitang laban dito, hindi ibig sabihin yung nakikipag-away o nakikipagsagutan o nakikipagsuguran o nakikipagpalitan ng mga bash sa Facebook. No? The word fight here means, ang ibig sabihin ng fight dito is to push, to strain, to sweat. To exert effort. To give your best shot. Yun ang ibig sabihin ng fight. Nakikipaglaban ka sa puyat. Yun. Push pa more. Nakikipaglaban ka sa pagod. Sige pa more, no? You, you fight with snow. Ah, nako, matinding kalaban yan sa Canada, no? You fight with homesickness. You have fought with a lot of sacrifices. Yun yung fight na sinasabi dito, mga kapatid. You see, church, I salute a lot of you. Dami dito mga nanay, no? You have fought a lot just to bring your families here. Di ba? Ilang taon kayong nawalay sa mga pamilya ninyo? Nagsakripisyo, kumayod, nagtipid, nagtiis para lang mabigyan ng magandang kinabukasan ng inyong mga mahal sa buhay. You have built on your past in that area. So I salute you guys. Ang dami dito mga kapamilya ninyo nandito na, praise the Lord, nagbunga ang inyong mga hirap at sakripisyo. Yung iba on the process pa lang. It's okay, you'll get there. You know, kung sino pa ang nabibless ako, lalo na itong araw na to, I, I salute our young people who are right now here, lalong-lalo na kayong mga nandito ngayon. You are fighting against what your flesh wants. You see, the world is calling them to have fun, distracting them to make money on Sundays. To spend time with their lovey dudes. Lahat sila may mga kotse, no? To travel and go sightseeing, etc., etc. But you see, I, I can see how they are fighting against temptation. They are choosing to be with God and to serve the Lord. That's why they are here today instead of somewhere else. 
Yung iba dyan, puyat, hindi natulog kasi nag-swimming magdamag kagabi. Pero andito pa rin, naglit pa ng worship, hallelujah. They are offering their skills and talents to God. Praise God, I am so blessed sa ating mga kabataan na patuloy na nakikipaglaban sa akay ng mundo. That's the fight. That is fighting the good fight. Ang sarap kumita ng pera. Ang sarap magtrabaho sa weekend, double pay. Lalo na pag-holiday, triple pa. But we're fighting against the urge because we love the Lord and we want to keep the faith. Amen. Palakpakan natin ang Panginoon. Praise the Lord. So church, keep on fighting. Marami na tayong napagtagumpay. Ang laban nung nakaraan, hindi ito ang panahon para tayo ay sumuko. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, next verb. Paul stated, I have finished the race. Sabi niya, no? Perfect past tense, no? Paul said that he has successfully completed the course, the track, the lane, the race that was set before him. No? Remember, itong mga words na to ni Paul, it was like his um, goodbye speech to his spiritual son, Timothy. Nagpapaalam na siya kasi malapit na siyang mamatay. Kaya niya nasabi itong mga salitang ito. So, likewise for us, church, no, when we get into the finish line, sa tingin niyo, will we be able to say, I have finished the race? Masasabi kaya natin yon. You see, in the race that is marked out for us by God, we cannot afford to lose track, church. We need to stay in course. We need to keep on going hanggang sa kunin ni Lord ang buhay natin until the Lord takes our life. Now the problem is, do you know when the Lord is going to take your life? Oh, lalo lang second coming. Do we know when He is coming back? What if Jesus comes back today or this very hour? Is he going to see you actively running in the race? Are you on track, church? Huh? So yun yun. Ang goal natin, ang prayer natin palagi sa Panginoon, Lord, may I finish the race well. Amen. And then the third verb was what? Sabi niya doon, I have kept the faith. Anong ibig sabihin nung I have kept? I have kept the faith deals with the fact that Apostle Paul followed the rules. Hello? He did not foul in the game. Hindi siya nag-foul, parang sa basketball. No? He did not break any rules. Paul did not get disqualified in the game. So, to keep the faith, it means you need to guard your faith. Can we say guard your faith? Bantayan po natin ang ating pananampalataya. Alam nyo kung bakit kailangang bantayan? Kasi pwedeng mawala. Pwedeng agawin ng kaaway. Itong mga words of God na naririnig natin ngayon, these are seeds that are planted on our hearts. Pwedeng nakawin ng kaaway. Sa papaanong paraan? patutulugin ka ng kaaway para hindi mo makatch. O kaya ipapalimot niya sa'yo, i-resin niya, i-delete niya. That's why we have to guard our faith. That's how we keep the faith. Di ba? Ang diling mag-memorize ng memory verse pero ang daliring malimutan. Because we're not guarding it. O ano pa? To keep the faith means to observe and follow the rules. Parang sa game yun, sa rules. Pero biblically speaking, we need to observe and follow God's commandments. Amen? We need to hide God's word into our heart. Anong sabi ng verse? Thy word have I hidden in my heart so I may not sin against you. Bakit tayo madaling magkasala? Kasi wala man lang tayong word of God na nakatanim sa puso natin. But if the word of God is where we are standing and our foundation, 
then we will be able to keep the faith. Amen. Hallelujah. You see, si Paul, Apostle Paul, loyal siya sa salita ng Panginoon, sa kanyang serbisyo sa Panginoon until the end. He took no shortcuts. He did not disqualify himself. Kaya nasabi ito ni Apostle Paul. Sabi ni Apostle Paul, Therefore, I do not run like a person who runs aimlessly. Yun bang tatakbo ka na wala kang target, wala kang end goal? No, I don't run like that. I do not box like one that is beating in the air. Alam niyo yung nagbaboxing na wala namang kalaban, hangin lang yung sinusuntok. Hindi ako ganun, sabi ni Apostle Paul. Instead, I discipline my body and bring it under strict control so that after preaching to others, I myself will not be disqualified. So to keep the faith, we need to discipline ourselves. Napaka-importante sa Kristiyanong pamumuhay natin ang disiplina. Church, huwag tayong maging pasaway sa Panginoon. Amen. Discipline. Sabi nga, kung gusto nating maging matagumpay sa laban, disiplina ang ating kalaban. Amen. But you see, sometimes what's sad for Christians, they think they are already saved. God has already given them the freedom. Oh, I am free. I am free to dance. I am free to live. Ano yung kinakanan natin? I am free to whatever. Eh, yung minsan labis-labis, yung iba, I am free to sin. Eh, anak naman ako ng Diyos eh, patatawarin naman niya ako. Di bali, mapagmahal ang Diyos. Yun minsan ang excuse natin, di ba? Di bali, bago ako matulog mamayang gabi, magsusorry ako sa Panginoon. Para at least kung kunin man ako ni Lord sa pagtulog ko, save ako. Kaya ngayon, magkakasala muna ako. Ang daming mga garo kasyano, ganun mag-isip, di ba? Because we abuse the love of God. Pero anong sabi ni Lord? Hey, excuse me. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Huwag kayong palilin lang. Hindi natin pwedeng lokohin ang Diyos. Aanihin ng tao ang anumang kanyang itinan. There is always a consequence of our stubbornness. <laughs> so, let us keep the faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's discipline ourselves with the love of the Lord. Okay, iwan na natin yon. Ano ulit yung point number one? To keep the faith, we need to be prepared for the present. And point number two, to keep the faith, we have to build on the past. And point number three, nakikinikinita nyo na siguro, no? In order to keep the faith, we also need to anticipate the future. Verse 8, sabi doon, There is reserved for me in the future. Wow, may nakareserba sa akin in the future. Ano yung nakareserba na yun? A crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day. And not only to me, but to all those who have loved, who are longing, who are waiting for His appearing. Praise the Lord! O, linawin pa natin, ay hindi ko pala tinagalog. Sabi sa Tagalog, kaya naghihintay sa akin ang koronang gantimpala para sa mga namuhay ayon sa kalooban ng Diyos. At sa araw na iyon, ang Panginoon na siyang makatarungang hukom ang siyang magpuputong sa akin ng korona. At hindi lamang sa akin, kundi sa lahat ng nananabik sa kanyang Pagbabalik. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So since Paul was prepared for the present because he built on his past, now we can see that Paul is anticipating for the future. Praise the Lord. Ano bang ibig sabihin ng anticipate? Hindi si antipate nyo yon. Anticipate. Anticipate. 
Anticipate means to expect, to wait eagerly, or to behold excitedly. Yan ang ibig sabihin ng anticipate. Diba parang sa kahit na anong karera, just like in any race, there is always an awarding ceremony. Saan kayo nakakita ng karera na walang awarding? There's always an awarding ceremony in the end. So Apostle Paul was anticipating for the awarding ceremony. He was eagerly waiting and expecting the time when he stands before the Lord to receive his crown. Church, how many of us are excited to see Jesus face to face? Amen. And how many of us are excited to receive our crown? Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Kung yung mga atleta nga dito, excited na sabitan ng medalya, nakukumukupas. Nung unang panahon, alam yung sinasabit nila sa ulo nila, dahon ng laurel, yung pang-adobo. Di ba laurel yun? They leave? Oh. So if, if they are excited with those tangible things that will rot and will fade, how much for us, our crown of life is waiting for us, one that will never rot. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. As I end this message for today, let us be reminded of this story that Jesus taught his disciples. Sabi ni Jesus, our Christian race is like the parable of the ten virgins. Are we familiar with that story? Parable of the ten virgins. Five of them were prepared for the present. They prepared to meet the bridegroom. They have built on their past by not wasting their time to get extra oil for their land. They were eagerly anticipating for the arrival of the groom. And so when the groom arrived, they were all ready to meet him face to face. On the other hand, the five were foolish and were not prepared. They wasted their time. They slept. They wasted their time in the past. Hindi sila bumili ng extra na langis. Kaya wala silang oil sa kanilang mga lampara nung dumating ang group. So this only meant that they have not anticipated the arrival of the bridegroom. And so these five foolish virgins had to go back to the market to buy oil for their lamps. However, church, they were too late. The door of the banquet is already shut. And so no matter how hard they knocked on the door, Master, please let us in. We are ready now to come in. But what was the response to them of the groom? The groom said, Sorry, you have to go away. I do not know you. Hindi ko kayo kilala. Church, the message for today is to keep our faith. Amen. Panatilihin po natin ang ating tapat na pananampalataya sa Panginoon, mga kapatid. Many obstacles and storms will come in our way. But let's keep on fighting the good fight. Amen. Especially our good fight of faith. Laban lang, mga kapatid. Manatili tayo sa Panginoon. Marami pa tayong kaharapin na laban. But God said, I am with you. Be strong and be courageous, mighty warrior. Amen. Let's keep on holding on to God. Kapit lang, mga kapatid. Huwag tayong bibitiw sa pagtitiwala sa Diyos. Malakas ang hangin at bagyong dumarating. Pero kung malakas ang pagkakakapit natin sa Panginoon, pagkakaukat natin sa Panginoon, dumaan man ang bagyo, hindi tayo matitinat. 
hindi tayo papansin. As we all bow down our heads right now, and as I call on the music team, let us listen to the Spirit of the Lord. Ano ba ang inuudyok ng Espiritu Santo sa atin sa oras na ito? 